Hi guys, in just one second, I'm going to be introducing author Kate Kerrigan, and we're going to be talking about her brand new book called That Girl. Uh, she got me an advanced Kindle copy. I stayed up late last night reading it, got up early this morning, finished it. It was so good. She has written many, many books. She was even in the Fall of Poppies book that was put out by Hazel Gaynor and Heather Webb a couple of years ago about World War I. So we have a lot to talk about. I can't wait. Anyway, here is Kate. Hi everyone, I am so excited today to be speaking with author Kate Kerrigan and we are talking with her all the way from Eng from I, I was gonna say England. Ireland. Ireland. Okay. Yes. My, <laughs> mixed up I know, I know, I can't believe it. And and you know what's crazy? So you are my first Ireland person oh wow i know i'm so used to saying england because i talk to english authors all the time but i this, you yeah. are my first ireland I, and we have such a clear connection and i am so grateful to be speaking with you today oh thank you so much and we do have a clear connection and if you could see where i live in the middle of nowhere i live like on the sea in the middle of nowhere so this is kind of miraculous that we have a good connection i know i'm so excited <laughs> and it's snowing out here like it's just crazy i mean where about exactly are you michelle i'm in pennsylvania oh okay yeah i'm on the east coast I'm so that's coast. serious snow so when it snows that uh, when it snows here it's just like meh but when it snows over with you it's serious See, i was thinking differently i you know, I know so little about Ireland. I was thinking you were, I'm like, oh, she knows snow. She probably gets tons of snow over there. We have a very, very mild climate. We have a, we do really do have a very mild climate here. Uh, we never get extremes. No, we do occasionally. Like, but, but our extremes are not like your extremes. Yeah, you know? your seasons aren't as defined as our seasons. We haven't seen serious snow here since 2009. And I remember that year because we, we lost some people in our family. We were driving through snow to hospitals and stuff. And uh, that was the last time we had what, what you could call serious snow. They had some snow here in Ireland a few weeks ago, and everyone was like, it was a great big mega drama, but it was like, <laughs> just, you know, if you got a snowman out of it, you'd be lucky, Ugh. you know? You know, I'm 53, and I don't like snow. I prefer not, and I always think, what am I doing? Why am I still in the snow? But because I don't like it. But it does make you appreciate spring. When spring comes, everybody's like, oh my god, yeah, yeah. spring. Yeah, <laughs> no, we don't have, and we have, we have kind of very mess summers here. We don't have great summers. We just have like, you know, a bit of rain, a little bit of sun, and you know, the weather is just kind of flat. It's you know, yeah. there the, just aren't extremes. Interesting. You know? I, I yeah. think I'd like that though, but only because it'd be different. But. Anyway, we're going to be talking about Kate's newest Books. book <laughs> that called That Girl, which I just uh -huh. got yesterday, stayed up late last night, woke up early oh, this wow. morning, finished it. <laughs> uh, what a great book, Kate. I mean, oh, I you didn't it. finish it. You're lying. You didn't finish it. No, I did finish it. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was so quick. Oh, my I, God. It's just so frightening when you meet readers like yourself who are like voracious passionate readers because as a writer you know it takes me like, <laughs> like two years to write it and then you read it in like a night I that's know. amazing i know it, it's pretty funny because other authors have said that to me they're like oh it took me so long did you really finish it yeah. and i'm like yeah. i'm sorry i kind of read books for a living like i have to read that's them. so much better <laughs> that's so much better than when people say to you i started a book and you know it's great, and I really love it. And then, and you're kind of there's always a little part of you as a writer that's quite extreme. That we love extreme readers, you know. So there's always a little part of you going, "What you didn't like take the day off work, or you didn't <laughs> kind of to finish my book? Do you know? You just kind of put it down. You actually like, put my yeah. really good. You would have read it straight through. So I'm delighted to hear that. That's Thank right. You. I didn't put your book down except to sleep. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> You went to sleep. I went to sleep. <laughs> you I, I, I had to find a good place to go to sleep, too, because I'm like, one more chapter, one more chapter. And then it's like midnight. I'm like, okay, okay, put it down. Just put it down. It is that good. I mean, I, I knew it, though, because um, I had read Fall of Poppies, 
uh, okay. last year. And yes. I have stalked all of you writers since then. <laughs> so wow. I've interviewed almost all of you because I yeah. love that book so much. And, and I did get to talk to Hazel and Heather Webb. And, yeah. and they're so yeah. awesome. I love them. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 So I, I knew, you like, I knew this book was going to be good. I kind of, and when you got it to me, I was kind of like, okay, dinner's made. Everybody's ready. Everybody's cool. I'm going upstairs to read. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I wanted to ask you, like, my first question is what, when I started reading this book was over here in the U.S., because I don't know if you know about this in Ireland, but we had a show in the 60s called That Girl. Yeah, I did. I did know about that. Okay. I was like, maybe yeah. she did. And it was so funny because I was talking to a friend this morning, and they're like, of course she knew it. I'm like, I don't know, because we, I don't know. I don't know which show no, she gets. It, no one here would really be aware of it. But then what happens is whenever you write a book, the first thing that you do is you – because titles are quite difficult. So the first thing that you do is you put it, you, 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 I, I always Google the title of my books. Okay. And if there's something, and then sometimes you go with the title that you have because there might be other stuff out there, but you know, that it, it might just be obscure, it might not clash or whatever. And it was interesting seeing all the stuff for that girl for the 60s because the, the title of the book, That Girl, really just came. Uh, it, 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 I, I didn't really come up with it. It was my publisher, who's a very brilliant woman called Amanda Ridout. And um, we were in a meeting one day and I was just like, I, I just, I can't come up with the title of this book. And she said, that girl, darling. And I went, oh yeah, that sounds really great. And then I went and I looked it up and I saw that great show in the 60s. And the two things kind of then, I mean, I hadn't finished the book when the title came through. And the two shows did kind of link in nicely because they were both set in the 1960s, you know, and both about like, it's it's kind of, I mean, my story is obviously very different right. to the theme right. of that girl, but it had, there was a nice synergy there. So I just said, you know what, run with that, run with it. Yeah, I kind of like that too, because um, yeah. Lara, and I don't know if that's how you say it, because Lara, the, the main character, you say Lara, yeah. Lara, in my head yeah. I hear Lara, but um, what I love is that she's in fashion and- yeah. That girl, the opening scene is like her running the streets with this flowery dress that was so 60s. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the images. You know? yes. The thing about the 60s is that, you know, writing about it is because I write my stories are all in the past. So I take very modern things, um, you know, women's modern issues, and I kind of place them in times in history where I felt they were the most relevant, you know, and one of the big themes of that girl, one of the big social themes of it is the sexual threat, yes. you know, the sexual threat that sexual freedom brings, you know, promiscuity and the fact that, um, you know, in the 1960s, uh, the pill came in and suddenly yep. that, you know, women, the, the blouses of the 1960s, the 1950s post-war Britain and America were unbuttoned and everything became loose and sexy. And this was supposed to signal a kind of a sexual freedom for women. Yes. Uh, and actually it did do that, but it brought with it a lot of sexual threat as well, because suddenly women were available, our bodies were available. You know, and then we, we were under pressure to be available and make ourselves available. And um, so I wanted to explore that. But the reason I wanted to explore it is because I think that we're living through a very sensible, a, a very similar time now. Right. And a time where that threat is very prevalent with women. And there's an awful lot of talk, especially through like the Me Too stuff and everything, yeah. that women, uh, because we are confident in our bodies because we are showing our bodies that, and because we are sexually liberated that that brings with it a kind of threat so really the the, the underlying theme of that girl was uh you know look how far we've come not very far yeah. and this is the thing that i find writing period yes you know writing things that are setting periods but the thing with the 60s is that it's such a visual time isn't it do you know, it was such a, when you say to people the swinging cities, immediately those wonderful pictures come into your head of women in mini skirts and yeah. everyone having fun, floral fashion. And yeah. Yeah. And you know, I have, okay, so I was born in 64 and, um, same, same age as me. Oh, were you? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So I was, um, like I can tell when I go through old pictures of my mom. Now my mom was young when she had me, she was 17 when she had me and, Whoa. 
her wedding picture was this one picture, you know, and you can kind of see how her hair and just, you know, makeup, right? But then as 65, 66, by the time my brother was born, everything changed. Her makeup got different, her, her colors of her outfits, her hair. Like, it was, I was like, oh my God, what'd she do to her hair? Like, her hair just, like, went to this, like, extreme. But wasn't it kind of a time of, I don't think we... The fashion in those de- through the, the 50s and the, and the 60s and the 70s, you know, if you look at what we're wearing now and then look at the, <laughs> the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, it's not that crazy different. It's really but like, I can remember as a teenager going on a, a, to, to France for a month at the age of like 13 or 14, going on a school trip. And when I left my mother, uh, she had like um, a big, she had permed her hair into like a big afro, okay, and she was wearing these big glasses. And then a month later, her and my dad came to pick me up at, at the train station, and I didn't recognize her. She had a pixie cut, a blonde pixie cut, and she had been on the Scarsdale diet and eating nothing but boiled eggs for like. Oh. Three, three or four weeks, and she'd gone down to like she looked like a completely different human being. I was like, I didn't recognize her. Fashion was so, it was so crazy extreme, and from decade to decade, you could see those differences. Like it was so dramatic. It was like there was an excitement about culture and fashion and what we wore and how we felt that has just diluted and gone. I don't know. Like I wrote a book called The Dress yes. um, a couple of books ago, and that was that was all about couture in the 1950s in in America. And I think fashion is so interesting because we think of it as being a very fluffy kind of surface subject, but actually, what we wear in our relationship with clothes, I think, runs a lot deeper than that. You know. And that's why I write a lot about women and what they wear and women that work in the, you know, in fashion that have that kind of connection because I think it's, it's kind of important. Yeah. And I'm really bad at it. <laughs> I have to tell you, but my, my one daughter works at Ann Taylor at Loft and, um, you know, I'll go into her and be like, I need, dress me. Okay. Cause I, need to, I need to not look like the housewife, but you know, that I am, you know, the, the, I don't know. That's what I think of myself. I'm a homeschooling mom and I'm in the house a lot and I do this. And, you know, when I have to yeah. get out, I'm like, can you just get an outfit for me and dress me up? No, I'm kind of a bit like that, but I'm like that myself as well, because either I'm writing at home and looking after my kids. So I have two or I'm out at some work thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, kind of. Ta-da. So my, I, I either have evening wear or pajamas. That's it. There's nothing <laughs> There's no going to the office or – so when I have to go out and do something, it's the same yeah. the thing. You know? And that's what I loved reading about her because in the 60s, it was like about their fabrics and about their – you know, like you go into their fabrics and the colors and, you know, I, my mom sewed all of our clothes. Um, so <laughs> that was always interesting because she dressed a lo- us alike a lot. You know, like we, you know, but, but it was all very flowery and very, you know, like when I yeah. looked at the pictures, I was like, wow, that, I don't know, okay. You know, like that was just. But it's all that, you know, things that happened in those times that don't happen anymore, you know? Yeah. Women, I mean, when I was growing up, I, if you wanted to wear something fun or something funky, we didn't have design, you know, you, you made it. Right. You're right, you know? and she did. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. Like she did that. No. She made all of our clothes, but you know, a lot and a lot of her evening gown. Like I just remember her always sewing, and we just don't do that. It's it's so cheap now too. We can go to it like is a, cheap to buy clothes, but it's also it, I, all of those women's home crafts and everything are coming back in. Like when I when I wrote the dress, I was surprised how many bloggers. Do you know were out there sewing things and making yeah. things? A huge that. That home crafts industry and the homemade fashion industry and sewing and all of that, it's a huge trend. 
I'm really happy about that. I crochet. Oh, yeah. yeah, I crochet. I got that from my grandmother. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But my one grandmother was a seamstress, and she was very, very um, popular seamstress. She made clothing for people. And I'm really happy to hear that because I didn't learn it. But, you know, when I was reading in the beginning of your book, when you're talking about her, you know, making all these dresses, and, and yeah. that's what my grandmother did for a living, not fashion. I mean, hers were a lot different. It was a different thing. But I was like, I wonder whatever happened to, you know, people just don't sew. So I'm really happy that that's coming back. Yeah, that you found it's, coming, it's coming back in. Yeah. You know, as a kind of a pain. <laughs> well, you know what? I used to, I remember as a kid going to those fabric stores, you know, yeah. my mom was always buying fabric and I love looking at fabric, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's a lot of fun. So, okay, so now we kind of know where this all, you know, where this was headed for this book. So um, I love like quotes and first lines. And okay, so I love finding them. And then I look after I'm done finding them. And then I get mad when somebody else has found them because of oh. the original, but it's okay. I'm over yeah. it. <laughs> that just means that that's how good it was. But I loved the opening line to this book because to me, it just set the stage and it was like this eerie undertone, which you wouldn't think that it would be because I'm going to read it so that people understand what I'm talking about because you wouldn't think that it would. But to me, that's exactly what it did. And the first line, it says, it was her first visit to Dr. Dorian Black's surgery and Hannah liked him straight away. And right away, I was like, oh, where's she going with this? This is not good. <laughs> and when I went back this morning to like look at it again, because I was like, well, I mean, it's not like, I don't know that everybody would have gotten that, but for some reason, I just knew that like, that, that was going to go somewhere, you know? Yeah, and, and, like, sure does. As a writer, like, how much work did you put into that first line? Like, was it something you wrote when you first sat down, or did you go back? So what happened was is that, you know, as a writer, I, I don't know, maybe it's different for other writers, and I think sometimes I just, I, you know, I, I go over things over and over and over again, and I learn lessons with every book that I know that I've learned a million times before, and it's kind of like a layering thing. So if I'm not, if, if I'm not improving significantly with every book in certain areas, you know, and the technical, I mean, I would have rewritten uh, those first few chapters, I don't know, you know, significantly five or six times. Um, and creating the character of, particularly when you're creating baddies, and I have, I have a really bad man in the next book. You know, so what happens is, and it's just a process. So first of all, what happens is you say, you know, you write it out like there was this really bad man and he did all these really bad things. <laughs> and then, and then uh, you go through, you, you give it to someone or you, and you think, oh, this is great, like he's so bad. And then you give it to someone and they go, yeah, but, you know, you know he's bad. So you have to hide it and you have to hide it and 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 then reveal and reveal and reveal and reveal. And that hiding and revealing thing um, is the trick of writing really... Uh, thrilling books right. you know and some people every writer I, I teach creative writing as well and every writer is different and every writer has a different vibe and has a different talent and has things that come more naturally more easy to them you know now my uh, and when you know what your strengths are um, then you can play to them but you can also learn to do you know, other things that, you, that, you know, and my strength is emotional veracity. That is, has always been why people read my books, why people buy my books is because there, I, 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 I write, I know that I write well and have always written well with emotional authenticity because that's who I am and that's what I'm all about. And so, but then there are other, so my characters are, are great. And my emotional authenticity is great. So that's good. But then, aside from that, you have plot, you have structure, you have, if you want to write something that's thrilling, um, you have the reveal thing. And then that's where you begin to learn skills, and it's all about editing and rewriting and longevity as well as a writer. I've been writing for a long time. And there are people that write that, that can sit down and write something that had that you know that is thrilling right from the word go, or someone that can come up with like a really original kind of spanky idea straight away. Do you know? So everyone has different things. So that 
that thing of that first line, that will have, um, that will have, yeah. But I know that, well, you know, what I would do is with the first chapter of a book, you go over and back and over and back and over and back and over and back and over and back, <laughs> and over and back the chapter. Because the first line, the first page, if you don't have people in the first page, you know, and I show people the first page, do you know, I would have like, um, I would have advanced readers and I would have people that I, I mean, if you go onto my website and you, and you sign up for my, um, and you sign up to my mailing list, um, you can then, um, from my mailing list, occasionally I pick out like advanced readers who are people that I can, that I send stuff to early on and they can come, you know, like if I have a first chapter and I think, I don't know where this is going, so you can come back and say, actually, that is a really, you know, I get the first page. So I, you know, I kind of, and so it takes, it does take, it doesn't just happen. Right. And you know what, I've had a couple of people send me books too, a couple of new authors, and they'll say, you know, <laughs> read this first chapter and let me know. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not skilled. I'm not, I didn't go to school for writing. I don't, I'm a reader. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I know when I read it, I'm like, yeah. mm, I'm, I'm bored. I'm on the second page and I'm yeah. bored. And, yeah. you know, and I don't know how to tell people so to be different. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just, that's all I can do is be honest and say, I'm bored. Yeah. Right now, yeah. Lord, and I'm, I'm not even yeah. halfway through your first chapter. And yeah. so many times people will go, I see them, they'll go into bookstores, which when they do, because of course Amazon is, you know, big, but you go into a Barnes and Noble, people will pick up, they'll read the first page and, and then they decide. You know? Yeah. So it is a huge thing and it's a huge thing for me as a reader. And so when I get a first line that I'm like hooked right you know sometimes it doesn't always happen I have to read a couple but um, first I, I am you know and as I read more and more books I'm really you know that first line I pay attention to I'm like hmm if I were to be a critic about this what would I say about this first line yeah yeah you know? yeah it is it's that first page you get people or they're gone yeah and there are too yeah. many books out there, and that's another thing. It's very competitive. There's a lot of books, so it's like it you got you to catch, you know, a reader just like that. And uh, so I just, it. but I'm not the first one because then this morning I went on Amazon and some one of your reviewers said it, and I was like, oh, I wanted to be the first. <laughs> <laughs> But that's okay. That just means that's how good it was. So somebody yeah. else saw it besides me. So that just tells you that's how great. good. So it's great for writers when people when people do pick out quotes and stuff like that. You kind of like it's it's one of the really really nice things about the online book reading community. Yes, it's one of the nice things that you guys do is that you kind of give quotes back to us and you're kind of sitting there going, oh wow, did I write? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what I wrote. You know, you write the book and then you're into the next one. Right. That's what writers do. You know, it's like once it's written and it's out there, then it belongs to the readers. It's like their book. Yeah. And then the next one, and you, you kind of forget, you know? Yeah, and, you you know, like I always write down all the books the authors have written before. Yours was a lengthy list. Okay, <laughs> but what I like to see is the pattern. And, you know, you're coming out with a book at least a year, every, very consistently, if not more yeah. than that. So, no. so uh, how do you do that? <laughs> Well, I, I do do a book a year. In okay. fact, this, this last one has been a gap of 18 months. So this one took a bit longer. And I am tired. This next one <laughs> might be a bit longer as well. You just, you get into a rhythm with it. And um, it, it pans out for me. I mean, because I also, um, I teach. And I, um, and I have a young family. I have a, I, I, I have a late, a late baby. So I've a, I've my little baby who's eight, Aww. and I have, um, and I also I do other bits. You know, I do I have a weekly, I do nonfiction as well. I do a weekly news, which I love, and I'm not prepared to give any of those things up. And um, so producing a book a year, it's really about. Um, I don't know. A lot of it is as well as just like not panicking. <laughs> <laughs> like I have to deliver. I, I delivered uh, that girl in June of last year. So June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. So they had eight months wow. to package it, promote it, send it out to people, do all of that. Um, and now I have to deliver another book in June. And I actually haven't started writing it yet. Well, I kind of have, but I haven't, I've, everything is in the bin. 
I kind of know what it's about, but it's kind of changing every day. So I will have four months to write that book, um, which isn't very long at all. But so much of the process for me is planning, knowing what I'm going to write, having a strong feeling for what I'm going to be writing about so that when I sit down and do it, you know, it can, you know, it, it'll, it'll kind of flow and come out, you know. But it's, it, it's, it's a lot. It's a, I think, um, yeah, a lot of it is just about focus and discipline and the will to do it. Yeah. A lot of writers, a lot of career writers, because it's not a hugely lucrative career. I mean, unless you're absolutely at the very, very, you know, yeah. the, the upper echelons or self-published authors now right. who are in control of their careers and in control of their sales and what you would call authorpreneurs which most of the successful self-published writers are now where they they invest in themselves and you know right um so you you have to have you have to have a kind of a vocational will to do it do you know yeah and that's how long it takes me there are writers uh writing now particularly in the ebook market writing two three times three books a year in the commercial fiction market. I could never, I could never do that, never. Well, um, I always think with books like yours, because I'm, you know, reading a lot, and, and the ones that I see that self-publish and put out more than one book a year are usually not in this genre, okay? When you're doing, his, it's historical, and it's also thriller, drama, tension, yeah. building. But it, ta it, it takes time, and it takes work, and it takes research, and it it's... You know, it, it takes skill. Yeah, doing one book a year is what I yeah. think. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, one book a year, and if you produce, really you have to now, in order to be viable with a publishing house, um, you have to be producing a book a year. You have to, you have to, you know, you have to keep. Keep your name out there. Keep your name out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So even the big authors are under pressure to do that. So the um, Moriarty's and the Marion Keys and the... Really, a book a year. Yes. Yeah. I'm. Yeah, that's exactly what I see. And when I, when, but you've been, you know, like when I see it, like for the first two books, I'm like, okay, they're starting their book a year. But you have been at it, so you know. What it's like. Every year, a book you a know? year. Yeah. I yeah. have two. I think I've had I've I've had two books that were um that had eighteen months. You know. Yeah. And one of them was uh, when we had a terrible year in two thousand and nine when we lost loads of people in our family. And I, it took me an extra six months. Yeah. <laughs> and then this year we built a house, and it took an extra six months. Wow. You know. But also the other thing is, is like Michelle, if you stop, if you stop doing it, like if you, if if I'm not writing, I'm really like not good. Yeah. Like I, there's there's a marked difference that the people around me, uh, when I'm in a book and when I'm not in a book. Like when I'm not in a book, when I'm not writing a book, and when I'm not creating a fictional story in my life, when I don't have that parallel world going on, I'm not myself. <laughs> yes. you know? I'm just a bit awful because instead of thinking about that fictional world, I'm thinking about my marriage, <laughs> my kids, not how I get on with my sisters, yeah. <laughs> or everything I need done in the house that hasn't been done. Like, my creative energy is going elsewhere. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or making sure that my kids pass their exams. You know, it's yeah. like, so they're all like, go away and write a book, because then you can take the attention of us for a while. You know? you know what? I am the same way with reading. It's so weird that what you say. I didn't realize. Like, I take Friday nights off because I do interviews all week. And then I wow. always think, no, this is what I think. I'm going to take Saturday off, too. But by Saturday around noon... I'm like, all right, what's my next book? What's my next book for, you know, Monday? And yeah. then I start getting caught up, yeah. you know? At least yeah. I'm not doing it as fast, but I am, like, I take Friday night off. Yeah. And, and then I start, you know, saying to my kids, like, so what do you guys want to do? And my I, my teenage kids that are now here, and they're looking at me like, what? I'm like, I don't know. You want to go do something? They're like, no. I'm like, all right, I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> I have learned. I have learned. Friday night, that's it. And then I'm going to go back. Yeah. 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 Oh <laughs> we have a God. lot of energy, us, you know, moms at this age. We got a lot of energy. We have to expel. 
(laughs) (laughs) But anyway, it was so much fun. I am so happy that I got to read this book. I love being a one of the first readers. That just warms my heart. It really worked, you know, because it, like this has not even been released in the shops yet. Yeah, we you know, it's online. It's available as an ebook, um, but it's not even available, and it's it's not available as a book in America. I don't know until next year or whatever as an actual real book, but okay. just as a, as an ebook, it's available. No, okay, I couldn't get it as a Kindle until next week. Which is why I was like, I frantically like, hey, oh. hey, can you get back to me? I can't get this book. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, I'll have to. Well, then it's probably because I don't know. I haven't. I haven't looked at. Yes, it's probably not. It's probably no. It's not been launched until yeah, February the eighth. Right. That's why I was like that's yesterday. I'm like, you're right up front of it. Yeah, I was like, Kate, please Brilliant. answer me. I need this book. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I saw that the paper. I think it's. I don't know, April 1st. The hardback, is, the hardback is available, so it's probably available as a hardback and an ebook. And I'm just so useless, I don't even know where my own book's available. But I imagine <laughs> that the hardback and the ebook are available on Thursday, the 8th of February. Okay. All right. So that's so it. Like, I that's will right. send you over a copy of, a signed copy of the book for your uh, viewers as soon as I have it. And I might send you over for you. A copy of the dress that you might like to read because oh, I, I would love you to read that because we talked about sewing and stuff like yeah. that and your mother yeah. in the 1950s uh-huh. is your mother still alive Michelle she's not oh. I know she's not she passed away in 2011 but uh-huh. still I mean sewing is such a big part of my uh, yeah past you know because of watching my grandmother and my mom sew my entire childhood like do you know what I love to do what I love to do in my books is I love to connect people connect women with the women of their past because I still have my mother and I thank God for her every single day yes. and you know so close to her and so so I feel for you and I'm so glad that I have her in my life today and I appreciate her as a woman of middle age to still have a mother it's a gift and she is she is my inspiration her and my grandmother for my books Aww. you know and so what i hope for you is that i will send you a copy of the dress and then it will connect you with your mother and that you will read it you will feel your mother as she was in the 1950s oh, yeah no, no, you will no. have that feeling for her what was your mother's name linda linda yeah okay and you know we were close we were only 17 years apart and she got sick and yeah. died very quickly. So you always think, you know, I was raising my kids and it was always like, oh, me and my mom will get that time as soon as my kids are raised, yeah. you know. But you can't you can't count on that. And I tell people, uh, women our age all the time that do have moms, take it, you know, don't say that. Take advantage of your mom. You know, she's no, here. And never, and, but the other thing is, is you, you never know, you never know who you have time with. And that's why it's so important to live in the day. And I don't do it. But you don't know. You know, and people go before they're before they're supposed to go, and it's just random. Right, you know? it is, and it was very, very difficult for me. I had a very horrible year that year, but um, you know, but I do like looking back on that because I love authors like you guys that read, you know, that write books about that, and I'm like, oh, I connected with her immediately. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, I remember, you know, the sewing and. I'll you send know. you another book, or even I might just, I might, I, I don't even think that I have a copy of it, but I wrote a book called The Miracle of Grace years ago. It's on ebook, I saw that. and um, it's about it's it's about exactly that. It's about a mother and a, a mother and a daughter. Aww. And yeah, so if you, it's kind of sad, um, but it's it's a, it's my mother and daughter book. So Aww. yeah. Oh, I really it's, appreciate but, that, Kate. Thank you so much for thinking of thank that. Thank you so much for talking <laughs> to me. You look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Can you show everybody the cover again? Oh, thank oh, yeah. you. Because I want them to see this beautiful cover. Look at that. I, I just think that that, I love the flowers <laughs> on her, you know, that outfit and just like. Yeah, we're delighted with it. In yeah. fact, what we're going to be doing in the next while is I think I'm, we're going to, I'm trying to get them to repackage all my Kate Kerrigan ebooks. To kind of look like this. Yeah, I love, I love that. I mean, the colors are just perfect on that book, yeah. you know? Um, and I love covers, so. 
that is really perfect. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time, Michelle. Yes, um, I will have I, all of Kate's I, links listed underneath here so you can find her everywhere and, um, and read this new book. It's amazing. So <laughs> thank you, Kate. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks a million, Michelle. Bye Take bye. care now. Bye-bye now. Oh my gosh, wasn't she so much fun? If you made it this far, I mean, you will know how much fun Kate was. That book is so good, guys. I mean, we talked a lot about it, but you know, with those kind of books, you can only talk so much about it because I didn't want to give away any spoilers, but it's called That Girl. It's going to be up there soon, probably by the time this video is posted, it will probably already be available. Um, but anyway, she is an amazing author. I feel so blessed to have been able to talk to her. Um, and, and we got such a good connection. I mean, she was in Ireland and we had such a great connection. So anyway, as I said, I will be putting her links underneath here. Um, if you enjoyed watching us, please hit like. And if you'd like to see my videos every day, please hit subscribe. Thank you guys.